Hey YouTubers, we are going to be reviewing this 2000 watt pure sine wave power inverter from a company called LCYMN. I don't know how you say it, I guess it's Elsimen, whatever, I'm not sure. Some of these Chinese names are kind of hard to pronounce, but anyways, providing the power to do the testing on this inverter is going to be the new Volco battery. Now, I've not used this battery before uh, in, a, in a testing. You've not seen me use it. I've played around with it and I've charged it and this, that, and other, but I've never really put it to the test. So I wanted to test it out uh, in front of you guys for the first time. So all I have done just now is just hit the power button there and I went ahead and went to the Play Store, found the Volt Go app. It's at 87% charge and the voltage is at 13.31. And uh, I'm not gonna get into the details of this battery yet. I'm just gonna throw this little teaser video out because the, the full review will probably be out probably next week. I'm gonna go ahead and start doing the unboxing on this in inverter. And as you can see right there, you've got a remote display and then there is a there's a ground wire then there is your instruction manual and then I'll be honest I've not pulled the inverter out of the box I when I received it I opened it and looked at it just to make sure there was no damage but I didn't pull it out yet all right so I went ahead and unboxed the inverter and I gotta say it looks really nice the fit and finish of it's really sharp looking and then it comes with your positive and negative cables and they're wound up got zip ties on it and then you've got your toolless uh, terminals and then it's got a lock washer that comes with it and two flat washers so it comes in a little baggy and then it comes with three blade fuses they're 40 amp blade fuses it comes with something i've never seen an inverter come with it came with a wrench it's a 14 millimeter on this side and 17 on this side i'm not real sure what the wrench is for to be honest with you looks like i'm gonna have to read the manual on this one so i gotta say the inverter looks really nice the case is really heavy built it is made out of aluminum and you know it's it's pretty tough i mean i've mashed on it and there you can't flex this case at all even on the bottom i mean it is solid i mean and you can tell this thing just under 11 and a half pounds so you know it's it's not a light inverter it's it's pretty heavy and i, I took a flashlight and looked down through the uh, ends and you can see it's got some pretty hefty heat sinks in it and it looks uh, pretty well made on the inside but we're going to get you some measurements on it right now so i'm just going to turn it over so it's a little easier to measure from the mounting edge right there all the way to the end i'm gonna turn these out just a little bit so when i do my measurement i can account for a lug being up underneath that terminal because it's going to add a little bit of thickness right there it's about 15 and a half that's a little extra just a tad bit extra for the terminals right there. And then as far as this direction here, it measures six and three quarter and it is right at four inches thick. So let's start the review down here on this end. Uh, you'll notice you got two fans and I was able to look in there and it says DFG DC brushless fan. And I'm not sure if that's a, a good name brand uh, fan or not. I could, I'm not real familiar with all the Chinese uh, parts, but I got to say they look of good quality to me. And uh, you've got your, your terminals here on this end. And again, they're just uh, your regular toolless terminals. It's piece of plastic with like a little brass uh, nut insert there and then it comes with a flat washer and a lock washer and then the bolt size is the same as it is on your battery terminals it is a m8 and then you'll notice here on the bottom you've got a little notch for them the mounting area so you can put a screw or a bolt in there and then on this side you've got three ac outlets and then the one there in the middle it looks a little funny it's uh, i guess it's some sort of multi outlet of some sort i'm not real sure it's got like a little notch coming off the edge of the blade you know we'll test it here in a minute and see if it accepts just a regular ac plug and then uh, you've got your little notches here on the bottom for your mount and then you got a display here and then right in there that is uh like a little uh jack for your remote display and you can see it right there that would just plug in we'll show you that here in just a minute and then right there where my finger is pointing that is for your little grounding bolt and then you got a, a typical toggle switch on and off 
And then right above it, you've got a little red LED fault light and then a, a power light. And I can't really tell what color that is, if it's going to be clear or green or what. It's hard to tell without putting some power to it. But I did take a flashlight and I did uh, peek in there and everything looked really good. The heat sinks look really thick and the wiring looks really nice in there from what I could tell. So it come with these two wires here and I wish these uh, manufacturers would pay attention when we do these reviews because uh, I was looking on here and it says that it's a 20, 22 millimeter wire. So I went to the old interweb and I found a chart here and went to a place called Inverge R Us. And it said four gauge battery cable should be used on power inverters rated up to 1500 watts. So if I can Google it, they can Google it. They need to upgrade these cables. We're gonna go ahead and use them. Uh, I'll just go ahead and let you know they're they're probably gonna get pretty hot, but um, we're, we're gonna go ahead and use it and see, see what happens. So this is what they sent us. So that's what we're gonna test it with. Now I did take a pair of pliers and I did scratch the, the coating off that, that lug right there. And uh, it is a, a copper lug, so it is copper and it's got uh, like a tin coating over top of it. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and get this inverter hooked up, but I just wanna go ahead and pre-warn you about the cables. If you are gonna use this inverter, definitely upgrade the cables. So with all my 12 volt builds, I always use this uh, new concepts wire. This here is one off uh, wire and it has 5,140 strands of oxygen free copper so this stuff is the real deal this is the best uh, wire you can get it's super flexible and uh, you always use the cell term brand of copper lugs that I, you find on Amazon. They seem to work really well with it. If you're interested in this, I've got an Amazon affiliate link for this down below, and uh, I'll try to put those uh, copper lugs in there as well. But if you're looking for some wire that it's more than capable of handling uh, this much power and keeping it nice and cool, this is uh, the, the cable that you need to be using. Also, one thing to mention, when you undersize the wire like this, all you're doing is building a lot of excess heat in the inverters. So if you want your inverter and your components to last longer, use a thick enough wire so it remains nice and cool and you don't build up all that heat in there. So I've got the uh, wires hooked up to the uh, inverter there and then before I connect the uh, wire to the battery, I'm gonna take a, a 30 ohm resistor. I've got these down below in the description if you're interested. These things are like 10 bucks for a five pack and you just touch it to the battery terminal. Just hold it for maybe five seconds and that's enough to charge the internal capacitors on the power inverter. And I see people not doing this. It's up to you if you want to do it, that's fine. But uh, I'm gonna protect the investment and not risk tearing up those capacitors. So when you go to connect the cable, it doesn't spark. And you see there was no spark. So that's why we do this. When I go to tighten it up, you guys see me do the review on these Weeha uh, insulated uh, screwdrivers. Man, these things are nice. I'm not gonna lie. I've been really enjoying these. Check out my review I did on these. And so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And I went ahead and plugged in the remote. You heard that little beep there. Uh, that red light come on and then it went off and then there's the blue power light. But the first thing that you'll notice is it's got a, a color display and then the remote uh, display is colored as well. So I <laughs> thought that was pretty neat. On the display, it does have a 13.4 input voltage and it says it's at 60 Hertz and 122 volts output so that's pretty high so we need to lower that down and then right here it shows the output wattage and it's at zero because there's nothing going out right now and then it says that it's at 25 degrees celsius so i went ahead and googled it it said that that 26 degrees celsius is about uh, 90 degrees and i don't see how that's possible because it's been sitting here in the house and we just turned it on so i don't believe that um, thermometer there is is correct at all and like i said we just switched this thing on it's not even you know had a load on it or anything so i definitely don't trust that uh now i'm gonna go ahead and test this uh the uh, output voltage it says 122 123 it fluctuates just a little bit there's 123 and then i'm gonna go ahead and plug it into a watt meter the watt meter actually has a function on it that tells you the uh, voltage and so i went ahead and got it set right there and it shows 122.8 at 60 hertz. And you can see right there, 122. And like I said, it's been fluctuating to 123. Yep, there it goes. So 
Actually, that part is, is, is correct. So that, that's a little too high for us. Uh, we need to uh, lower that down. The way that you lower that down is right here on the remote. There is a button right there in the center. And what you need to do is just hold that down. Here we go. And you, this thing makes a god awful noise. And it has a has a F13 code that pops up on the screen. So I'll go ahead and turn it off. And hopefully when we turn it back on, it'll change the voltage over. Hopefully. We will see. Yep, 112. And then look right there on the, the watt meter. It's at 112.6. So that's right where we need to be. That 122 is a little too high. So by switching that voltage over from 122 to 112, that puts you right where you need to be. Now I will say we were looking through the manual here and uh, you know just going through it me and my girlfriend we were we were cutting up laughing at some of the uh the the stuff that they've gotten in here i thought it was pretty humorous uh, right here it says uh warn not warning it says warn <laughs> and, and right here at the at the very top it says forbid wet hand this may cause electric shock prohibit wet hands <laughs> and then it says keep away fire <laughs> so whoever is writing their manuals for them, they need to have somebody that speaks good English go through here and proofread this so it's a little bit better. And I gotta say, I mean, it's it's got some other inverters in there. Uh, it shows the 300 watt, the 500 watt, all the way up to the 3,000, 3,500, and 8,000 watts. They tried to you know put everything in one manual and so it's not really detailed for this specific inverter now it is in color and the the pictures are are pretty good but um as far as being able to answer everything in clarity i didn't see that it was uh very clear to me now here in the back you've got some uh error codes and it tells you, you know, if F12 shows up, then it's a low voltage protection. Or if F10, it's high voltage protection. And F050, short circuit protection. And the list goes on and on and on and on. So that is neat that it does have all the codes there so you can troubleshoot it. So I, I do like that that feature. But uh, that's that's pretty much the, the uh, manual. It's not very big at all. Now, before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and test this uh, USB outlet over here on the side. Yeah, you can see right there, it's charging the phone, so that does work. So I just want to give you guys an up-close look of the little remote screen that it comes with. It's pretty much a duplicate of the screen there on the inverter. And you know, i got to say, it's pretty nice. You, you can tell that it's cheap made, though. It's got some little dings on it. And I thought it might have been in the plastic, so I peeled the plastic off the front of it, and those dings still remain. I mean, it's not busted or anything, but you would think that it, it shouldn't have that little ding in it. And I don't know. There's actually one right there on the bottom, too. So, But everything seems to work. It's got a backlight button over here, and then this button right here switches the uh, voltage. And like I showed you, it was at 122 volts, and now it's at 112. You just mash that in and hold it. And then this is the on and off. And the way that it works is you just hold the button down and it turns the unit off. And it shows that it's off right there. So now it's basically just on standby. And you can see right there. So to turn it back on, you just hold the button and it turns it back on. Now it does make a god awful noise. <laughs> I wish they would change that beep out a little bit. You know, it's not a normal beep. It sounds like it's really straining or something. Anyways, the, the remote works, you know, it does as it should, but I wish that uh, they would up the quality on that a little bit more. So next we're gonna test the sine wave. I've just got a, uh, an extension cord plugged into an outlet, and then I've got the watt meter plugged in, and I'm just gonna probe this. I've got some live wires right in there, and you can see over there on the oscilloscope that it is a pure sine wave. It looks really clean. And again, it says 112.9 volts at 60 hertz. So that's all good. All right, so before I do my load test, I just wanted to make mention that I'm gonna be monitoring everything here with a, a thermal imaging camera. This is from HTI. I've got a link for it. I got this off of Amazon. This thing works great. It's right around 300 bucks. And I'll put a link down in the description. I am an Amazon affiliate. Now, you know, I'm not gonna just suggest it to you if it's a piece of junk. 
you know I actually use this in a lot of my reviews just to check the temperature of the inverter and mostly to check the temperature of the the battery terminals and the cables and all of that and so that's what I'm gonna be doing in this video is monitoring and I know you guys probably won't be able to see it because uh, it's turned around uh, but I'll try to get you some good shots here but I just wanted to monitor them since I know that that those battery cables are a little bit undersized now we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn the the heater on now if you look here at the watt meter it shows that it's using 1.6 watts and the reason it's it's showing 1.6 watts is because I'm sure that the LED is using that 1.6 watts so whenever I turn it on it's gonna go instantly to high and you can see right there it's on high watch the watt meter it's at 300 Four hundred, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thousand. The heater, the fan just turned on, and uh, yeah, they're they're not super loud. Uh, you know, you can hear them. They actually sound pretty normal. Man, that thing is moving a lot of air. I do give it that. The air is blowing out the back towards the battery, and it's sucking in here in the front. And right now, the uh, heater is uh, putting out or using 1,424 watts, and I didn't get a chance to view it. Uh, the the amount of surge watts. We'll we'll check it here on the, the watt meter here in a second. There's a, a function on here where we can show the highest wattage of surge. In fact, we'll go ahead and check it right now. But right now, it's at 1412, but the highest that it surged up to was 1527 watts. So it got up to 1527, and now that it's stabilized down, uh, you're at 1410. So that's where we're at. And there it goes, 1410, 1411. So we're gonna go ahead and check and see if these cables are getting hot. I know it's just, we just started it. They don't feel like they're hot yet. But again, we're only running 1400 watts to it. We're gonna find something and kick it up about another uh, few hundred watts and see what happens. So we went to Walmart tonight and picked up this little bitty space heater for like 10 bucks just so we'd have something to plug in here. And I wanted to show you that the uh, heater is rated for, uh, I believe, 400 watts. That's what it says on the box. And you can see right here on the watt meter, it's uh, slowly climbing up. It's right at 360, but it keeps making its way. There's 361. And then here on the meter on the uh, inverter, it says 347 watts. Now 330, now 347. So it, it fluctuates and jumps at 336. 347 but then this one here is not jumping as much it's the it's fluctuating just a little bit like this one says 361.9 now 362.3 uh, th this one's just fluctuating in larger numbers so I don't know if that that gauge I doubt that's right all right guys so for the uh, load test we are going to be running uh, a space heater here. This is like a 1500 watt space heater. Now I've written down here on the back that, you know, I've seen it surge as high as 1581 watts, but then it stabilizes out around 1422. And then the little hair dry here, we're not gonna put it on the heat mode. We're just gonna put it on the fan. And with it on the fan, it uses roughly around 153 watts after it stabilizes out. So on surge, it's going to be higher than that. Now, the uh, limiting factor here is going to be the battery because the battery uh, can only uh, discharge to 150 amps. So that equals out to about 1,800 watts. So we're not going to be able to, to test the inverter all the way to the 2,000 watt maximum so it, you know if it cuts out before then that's perfectly normal it'll be the battery cutting out because that we're running it to the very max um, now if you want to see uh, what it will do if you uh, overpower it we will turn the uh, heat, heater part uh, on for the hair dryer and we'll run it up there four or five hundred watts and we'll watch the whole thing shut down and I'll show that to you what that looks like so 
Anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and get it started. I've got it plugged into two different watt meters. So in this watt meter here, you can see that it says 1.7 watts on the screen and that's just cause the LED lights lit up right there. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and it goes straight to high right there. So you can see immediately this thing jumps up to 500, 900 watts, 1000, 1100 watts, 1200 watts, 13, 14, 15, 1542, and now it's coming back down. So it, it surges different numbers each time. You know, not every time is it the same exact. And that depends on, I guess, you know, your battery voltage and all that. But right now it looks like it's going to stabilize out somewhere around 1400 and <laughs> something odd watts, not real sure. But then now we're going to go ahead and kick on the heat, the uh, hair dryer on low. Keep in mind this is not the heat mode, so it's not producing heat, it's just the fan. And I'll turn it, I'll set this out of the way so it's not loud in the camera. It's showing right there that it's 154 watts. So if you add the two together, you got 1555, because that's 1400 watts exactly. So let's see what else we can find. Well, I don't have any other spots to plug anything else into, but right there, that's 1400 watts. And it appears to be doing fine. The fans are doing a really good job at keeping it cool. I, I gotta say that. I mean, it's just barely warm. And I've been running this thing off camera and testing it off camera. So, like I said, this thing is doing a good job. The cables are just barely warm. I'm going to hit it with a thermal gun to see how hot it is. Now I'm testing the the uh, temperature there on the lugs on the back of the inverter. And it's the hottest that I've seen is about 123. 122. So right there where the, the lugs are where it screws in right there at the terminal you can see right there 124 now we went back up here to the uh, battery terminal and it shows that it's about a hundred and four degrees so it, it's getting a little bit warm but not crazy so let's go back down here to the inverter and we're gonna test and see what it says those lugs are at it's right at about a hundred and twenty nine degrees so it's getting there so like i said we can only get up to about 1800 watts before this the battery is going to cut out so right here the hair dryer is putting out 155 watts and the uh heater there is putting out 1400 watts so 14 and 155 that's 1555 so that's really as high as we can we can go because we've run out of plug-ins and and so we're at 1555 watts now what i'm going to do next is i'm going to go ahead and kick the heat on and this thing's going to surge up and it's going to far surpass the 1800 watts and it shouldn't take it long the battery should shut down pretty quick so i'm going to do that right now 757 watts on this one and 1400 on the space heater. It should be shutting down the battery pretty soon. Yeah, the hair dryer is at 755 watts. The heater's at roughly at 1400. So that's well above where it should be. So. There it goes. Yep. So you've seen that we we was able to get over the 2,000 watts on that inverter before it shut off, and it actually shut the battery down because we went over the 150 amps of uh, discharge current. So 
He, we did put the inverter to the test and it sat there and ran it and uh, it went above the 2000 for for a while there and so that's that's pretty good I'm, I'm impressed with it all right so I just want to give you my final thoughts on this LCYMN power inverter uh, I gotta say I'm very impressed with the inverter itself now the wires like I said in the beginning they're just not big enough they're not rated for uh, 2000 watts so I uh, wish they hadn't have even sent them. I mean, literally, uh, if you're going to provide the inverter and you're going to provide the, the cables, you need to make it up to where, you know, it says that it can handle 2,000 watts. These wires need to be able to handle 2,000 watts. So as far as the inverter, I'm pleased with the inverter. But the cables, they need to be upgraded. Now, as far as the, the little remote uh, screen here, uh, I wish they would improve on this. Now, I thought there was a little dent or something there in the plastic, and I thought once I peeled it off, it would go away, and it's, it wasn't. It's actually in the screen. There's a little dent there and a little dent there. So, you know, I don't know if that happened during shipping or whatever. I kind of highly doubt it uh, because the inverter didn't move around at all uh, because it was packaged in there really well. So the, I, I got to give it to them. The packaging was really good, but the quality control on this was just not... Uh, up to par you know I don't want to see dents in the screen you know so they need to tighten up on that but uh, as far as the inverter it did really well I mean you've seen that it, it went over the 2000 watts and ran, ran it and you know the limiting factor here today was the the volt go battery but you know that's not the battery's fault the battery did exactly what it was supposed to do and you see right here it says it's rated at a, a 150 uh, amps it is the maximum discharge current so it, that's about 1800 watts. So once it reached that 1800 watts, it ran for just a little bit and then it shut itself down to keep from hurting the battery. So uh, I'm very pleased with the Volgo battery. I'm gonna test it in some of my future videos and I've got a, a full review on this coming out probably here in the next week. And uh, I gotta say, this is an awesome battery, but uh, you know, I really, really like it. So, you know, I appreciate you guys tuning in. I know this was kind of a lengthy video, but, you know, as with all my videos there, you know, I really test this stuff to the very end and I want to do a good job for you guys at home. So, you know, uh, watch your mind. You know, it's kind of confusing when you get on Amazon. If you don't, if you're not tested this stuff before, it's kind of, it's confusing because everything looks the same and everything sounds like it's the world's greatest, but sometimes it's not always uh, what it appears to be. So anyway... I appreciate you watching, and if you're interested in the, uh, the uh, inverter there, I put a link down in the description for that, and I am an Amazon affiliate, so we do make a slight bit of commission. It's very, very tiny. Trust me, it's it's humiliating what we make off a sell of an inverter, but uh, anyways, whatever money we do get, we just turn around and buy stuff to end up testing and buying cables and just whatever, so it just goes back into it. We do this because we like doing it. But uh, anyways, uh, you know, if you're interested in the watt meter, I'll put a link for it. If you're interested in the oscilloscope, we'll put a link for it. The thermal imaging camera, I'll put a link for it down below. And, uh, you know, we'll put a link for the VoltGo battery in there. And until next time, guys, I appreciate you watching. Hope this video helped you out. Please give me a like, man. It really helps my videos get to more people. And uh, I know it seems crazy, but it really does help. So until next time, see ya.